Welcome back to Fit for Life. We've got something called GS for you today. GS for Life is the name of the show. It's grip strength. You need your hands for everything. They have to remain strong, don't they? Maybe you've noticed a difference when you push a button that it isn't going in anymore. So there are things you can do. There are many things you can do about it. Weak hands limit what you can do with them. They limit hand function. They may also limit your independence if you can't do certain things with your hands. Do you know what I'm talking about? Uh, any intricate things that we do require hand strength. Um, it, it's an indicator of vitality. It tells people and yourself, you can tell yourself that, yes, I can do this. I just, all I have to do is use my hands, right? But as we get older and with arthritis, especially in the thumb, you're gonna have problems. Uh, I do want to mention, anytime you try anything new, always ask your doctor about it, your, your PCP or your specialist, your arthritis specialist. So just keep that in mind. Anytime you start anything new, just check it out to make sure it's okay for you. It may be an indicator of general strength. If your hands are weak, that might mean weaker muscles everywhere. So I thought I should put that in there. I thought that might be interesting to you. You need hand strength for household tasks which we probably all do every day. Uh, how about gardening? Gardening is important. Many of us have gardens, and that takes the grip strength or hand strength. Hygiene, putting on makeup, washing, brushing your teeth, bathing, everything requires hand strength. So that's, that's why we're going to try a few things today. So the first one I want to mention is this little uh, stress ball, they call it. This one's a little bit smaller. You can get a larger one, all right? And just squeeze it. I think it feels good when you do it. And you do, you feel as though you're really strengthening your hands. I would do a couple of sets, maybe 10 each. If you want to do more, that's fine. You can do it while you're watching television. Uh, and try the other hand. Uh, to me, this is about the simplest. And maybe it is good for stress, I don't know. Let's find out. And then do each finger to your thumb. That one's a little more difficult. Baby finger. All right, try the other side, the other hand. So that's your thumb, forefinger, thumb, middle finger, thumb, ring finger, and thumb, baby finger down there. Kind of like that, and that's really easy. Wonderful. So that's one thing you can try. Um, let's take a weight here, one weight. And you're going to put your forearm, and we, we've done this before. I think we've done it up here. Let's try it down here on the leg. So the forearm is resting on your leg. If you cannot do that, you can do it up here. Just make sure the hand extends beyond the end of the arm, end of the arm. So let's try it down here. And just lift the hand up a little bit. You're not going to lift it up here. Just a little roll. Don't let the hand drop either. Forearm and hand should be on the same parallel here. So just little curls, one and two. It's a small movement, isn't it? And four. But while you're strengthening your hand, you're also strengthening your forearm. So that's pretty good. Great. Seven and eight. Now let's try the other side, but let's try it with your arm on the arm of the chair. I think I might like it better up here. Little, yeah, and I can actually lift that hand up a little bit more but keep that forearm down three and four and five and six and seven and eight switch over to the other hand so those are curls aren't they hand curls but now we're going to turn it over so you're looking at the top of your hand and make sure the hand extends beyond the end of the arm of the chair right and let's do a reverse curl. This one might be a little tougher too. And I'm doing, you know, the full load here because I want you to feel how your hand feels. Is, is this difficult? Is it impossible? Are you not able to lift that hand back at all? So just try it. You can do these anywhere really, as long as there's your leg is there or the um, arm of the chair. So you turn it over, you're looking at the top and back. Try to do at least eight or ten, two, and it, as you're doing this, you're tightening this, so that's good. That's always a, an added benefit, right? 
and 4, I hope you like it, 5, and 6, and 7, and 8. All right, let's put that weight down for just a minute. So those are easy. They don't take up much space. There's another ex exercise you can do, and if this is really uncomfortable, I don't want you to do it. And what is it called? It's called the chair dip. Holding onto the arms of the chair, you've got to kind of put the heel of your hand especially, kind of presses into those arms. And just think of, come forward a little and just a little bit of a lift up. So you're not lifting your body entirely off the chair. If you can do that, that's fine. But just push those hands in, good. It's not terribly comfortable. If you have an upholstered chair, that might be easier and you can do it. Push up. So I'm just, I'm just lifting off the chair a little bit. We'll say five and six and seven and eight. So just try that. See how you do. If it's terribly uncomfortable, you're getting pains you've never had before, I wouldn't do it again. Okay, let's try this one. This one, I don't know. I thought about this once. I thought I might make this my own, my own exercise. I'm sure it's been done someplace else, but with the tips of your fingers, rather than your palm flat down, just your fingertips and lift up. One, good strength that are for your hands, your forearms, your wrists, and your fingers. So these are just some things. Google it. Find out what is, you know, seniors, hand exercises for senior, seniors, hand strengtheners for seniors. You can also buy gadgets that uh, work different parts of the hand. So check it out, have fun with it. Um, remember, any movement is better than none at all, right? Yeah. So if you feel, though, that your hands are getting weaker, there are things you can do. So we're going to lift that up again. And then one more time. Good. You can feel that everywhere. <laughs> feel it here, top of the hands, everywhere. Shake your hands out a little bit. Let's close and open and close and open. This one feels pretty good, doesn't it? And four and five. I like this. Good. Keep going. Six and seven and eight. So now we're just kind of stretching a little bit. Each finger to the thumb, just alternating, then come back. Just gives you a little more dexterity. They say puzzles are good to keep those hands, those fingers dexterous. Good word. Back and forth. Circle those hands a little bit to loosen up. You've been strengthening and now you're going to loosen up just a little bit. Now there's another one I'd like to try that I haven't done too often. Uh, let's do this. Put your arm on the arm of the chair. Or for some of you, you might have to go down here. Or you could do it this way too, I suppose, holding either way. Do what you can do and just move from side to side, that way and back, rather than up and down, side to side. Um, this one's kind of tricky. Let's turn the weight out just a little bit on an angle and then straight. See if you can do it with your hands straight. Let's try the other side out. Lift the weights up. I like it better this way. This one's a little tricky. Watch out for those wrists. If you have weak wrists or arthritis in there, you're going to feel it. Just kind of giving you some ideas, some things you might be able to do. Or you can change them a little bit too if you want. So let's, let's just sit back and relax. We're going to work on the lower body right now to keep the lower body strong. So we're going to move that right up. There we go. Good. Okay. So let's put one weight on each leg. So what we're doing now is we're just strengthening. So you're going to lift one leg up and then the other good and three and four and five. I just wanted to do some strengthening for the lower body also. So we're doing upper and lower today. Six and seven. Good and eight. Now let's put the weights down. You don't even need weights to strengthen the lower body or any other part of your body, I suppose. Straight out, and you can flex that toe right back and bounce it 
and one and two. The slower you go, the more, the better the exercise, the more effect. Six and seven. Can you do 10? And nine and 10 and back. Now the other leg out straight. Let's flex that foot back and bounce it. One and two. It looks easy, but you can feel it. You can feel it in your quads, your abdomen, your lower back. It's a great strengthener. And five and six and seven and eight. Let's put the foot down. Relax for just a minute. Come forward. Drop forward. Let's stretch out your back. You've been sitting doing exercises, so we're going to stretch that lower back out a little bit. Wonderful. And keep your head up and then come all the way up. Another really easy, simple way to strengthen your legs. And it's usually the quadriceps that we're working on. You're going to lift up one and two and three. Easy, isn't it? And technically it's easy. And five and six. How does it feel? Feel your leg when you do that. Really, you can just feel it harden and it's strengthening. It's great. Six. We'll say seven and eight, but I think we've done at least ten. So this is great too. All right, try this with me. Lift up and over up and back. Up and over, nice and easy. Up and back and up and over. Up. Can you do one more? Good. And up and over. Good. Let's just shake it out a little bit. We don't do too much crossing over, so I thought that might be interesting for today. Lifting up and over and up and side. Now your abdomen is part of your lower body, right? Good, that's great. Over and up and out, up. Can you do one more? Good, and up and over and up and back. Wonderful. So let's just lift up, relax a little bit, out to the side, side. A little hip action there, you can feel it in your hip. Good, six and seven and eight, and nine, and 10. And to strengthen your feet a little bit, uh, and we can do this standing up also, just lift the heels up and put them down. Up and down, up and down. Do this if you're sitting for long periods. Get that blood circulating a little bit. Six, and seven, and eight. Now slide the feet forward, and just lift your toes. One. They don't have to be too far forward. I'll pull them back a little up. And four. How does that feel? It should feel good in your calf muscle, especially. And seven. And eight. Now, again, well, we didn't do this yet. We were supposed to do it, but we didn't. So we're going to do it now to tighten the abdomen, strengthen your lower back. We need a strong back. There's too many back problems today. Holding on however you want to do that. I kind of hold on the end of the arms. Just lift, lift those legs up. And if you do this, it makes it easier if you move your feet. This one might be tough. If you absolutely cannot do that, just do one leg. And you're still strengthening. And you can feel this tighten. Put your hand right here. You can feel it. Good. All right. And five and six and seven, and eight, the other side, lift up, a one, and two, and three, and four, good, and five, put your hand, you can feel it, you're strengthening, seven, good, and eight, all right, let's sit all the way back, heels down, and just shake those feet out a little bit, just to loosen up the muscles, we've been contracting, tightening, contracting, so, we want to loosen them up just a little. Good. Now, both feet out. Try to bring those toes back towards your body. Look at my posture. Is this good posture? No. So let's sit away from the chair and point and flex. And I, I wish um, I could hear you. And you, you could say, Karen, your posture is terrible. Correct it, you know, but I don't know what you're saying. 
I wish I could see all of you. Uh, sometimes I meet some of you outside. That's wonderful. I love that. Uh, try this one under and over. It's a good one. Tighten, tone, and strengthen. The mid, the mid, the mid, midriff is here, but kind of the mid body, I call it. Good. How does that feel? Not too bad, right? All right, now we're going to have to do this at stand because that's the king of strengthening your quadriceps for good balance. We always do things for balance, I think, in almost every class. Holding on here, and we're just going to get up. And I think I'll be kind to you today, and you're just going to have to do one more because you may have done it on your own. I don't know. Try to remember to get up that way, even from the couch. Um, if your balance is pretty good, if it's poor, um, you might have to hold on. So let's just stand up without holding on. Sometimes it throws you right back, right? Let's get behind our chair. And I'm going to do this so that you can see it. Now what about your lower legs? And yes, we've done it before because it's a good exercise. Just lifting those heels up now, you're getting more of a workout than sitting doing this because your feet carry the weight of your whole body, don't they? Ah, so you want to keep them strong. And five. Let go with one hand. Six. Can you do one without holding on? Seven. Oops, guess I can't. And down. Now you're going to plie, or just knee bends. Our feet aren't turned out. Now lift the heels up, put them down, bend. And up, and the more you do it, the better your balance will be. Good. And three. Good. And four. And five. And six. Good. And seven. Whoops. And you can hold on again. I'll give you a break on that one, all right? So you're going to just shake that leg out. Shake that leg out. Going to come forward just a little bit. I want you to kick to the back just to stretch those quads out a little bit. Three and four and five. So what we're doing now is strengthening the lower body. As I said before, good. All right. Uh, and I think even though we did it the last time, uh, let's try doing one squat. Just want to make sure that you know how to do it. So I'm going to bring that back. Stand this way, nice and tall, straighten everything out here, holding that abdomen in just a little bit. So what do we do first? We're going to bend the knees, open the feet just a little bit. Your arms are out, out from the shoulder if possible. Yeah. And just bend those knees and then push back as if you're going to sit down, but reach forward. So you see, this is going to save you from falling back because the arms are forward, all right? And if you can't go all the way down, that's okay. But squats are really important for the lower body. So let's try it again. Arms straight out from the shoulders. Bend those knees. Or you can bend the knees first and put the arms out, whichever is easier. And then as if you're going to sit down. So you're out this way and out that way. I do it up against a wall every now and then. It's much easier and it just maintains your form. Now, when you um, lean against the door jam, you want to bring your head back. Your shoulders should be touching back there. Now, people that are very round shouldered can only do this much. They can't bring the head back down. So let's pull that chin in. Uh, if you want to go grab a door jam, you can, I suppose. Just pull that head back. So shoulders are touching, bottom is touching, and your heels. No, your heels should be a couple of inches away if possible. That makes it much more comfortable. And then we'll just have the feet together. And then you could just go down in perfect posture. And sometimes I do it that way. Or I will do a regular squat. I'll do a regular one. And then just really come down and bend. And I can do it. And I don't have the best knees. You know, I have a little bit of arthritis in there. But I'm able to do it. And I, I know I'm guaranteed that I'm strengthening, I'm not going to fall over. So just keep that in mind. OK. And now we're going to do our famous, you know what, table back. We love our table back exercise, because that kind of stretches everything out. So let's 
Walk back, back, your arms are straight. See how far down you can come. Down, down. Yeah, so you, you're kind of going back here too. So your heels are down also. You're not on the front, just the front part of your foot. It's the whole foot. Keep your head up. And then you're going to walk back up. One foot forward, same arm and leg. You're going to lift that arm right up, pushing the hips forward. Let's do a nice back bend. Good. Great. Uh, let's do another table back. This stretches from the neck all the way down to your ankles, your heels. Walking back, straight arms. Try to flatten the back out. This time it should go down a little bit more, a little bit more, and even a little bit more. Okay, good. And then we'll walk back up. I'm going to put my other foot in front. Okay, same arm. Let's take a breath up first, up through the nose. And as you exhale, as you go back, you're going to exhale and do a nice back bound. <laughs> you can see I'm tired, right? All the way back. Back bends are important. We don't do enough going back. All right, we're going to sit down. And when you sit down this time, try to do it without this. Just see if you can sit right down. Just make sure that <laughs> that chair's in back of you, right? Okay, let's just relax for another minute here. I thought maybe for the last few minutes we could do some meditation. Uh, you want to manage your stress. It's one of the basic fit, the six basic fitness components is stress reduction. And it's a really good way to clear your mind, stop thinking about all the things that drive you crazy. We do it in our yoga class. We always do one yoga class in a week. It's usually that fifth class because I think it's important and it's relaxing and it's good for you and we do the yoga breath so let's breathe up together all the way up hold that breath and exhale through your mouth and as you exhale let your head drop right down oh that feels so nice it's a nice stretch on your neck now you can put your arms up here in the arms of the chair um, I like to per, uh, turn my palms up all right just bring the arms down if you want. I'll leave them here. Let's take another breath together. Breathing up through the nose. Holding that breath just for a couple of seconds. And then we'll breathe out and keep breathing out. Two, three. Try to breathe out for five or six if you can. Um, there's another way. There are many ways, but there's another way we're going to talk about today about breathing. You're going to breathe up for four seconds, hold your breath for four seconds, and then breathe out through your mouth for four seconds. It's called the box breath. It's just something a little bit different, does the same thing. It's just a different way of doing it, different way of doing it. So you're going to breathe up for four. One, two, three, four. Hold your breath. Two, three, four. Exhale and drop that chin down. That happens naturally for four seconds. So either way, you can do it either way that's the most comfortable for you. Um, I find when I do the uh, steady breath all the way up, let's do it together again, holding and then breathing, breathing out for six seconds, I find more relaxing. It seems to get, you know, get that air up to, up to your brain and um, it has a calming effect. And stress and relaxation cannot exist together. So if you can do the breathing, which gives you great stress um, removal, you're removing stress from your body, from your brain, um, it keeps you in the moment. And whatever you can do to attain that, the yoga breath will do all of that for you. Let's take another breath together all the way up. Hold and exhale. Now yoga is also good. This yoga breath is good for lowering blood pressure, clearing your mind, focusing your mind. Good for the heart rate too. It slows the heart rate a little bit. And bring your head back up. Let's do a little ear drop here. We haven't worked on the neck and head for a while. And that's involved, of course, in yoga also. Ear drop to the other side. Good. Now stay here and then just drop the head down slowly. If it's uncomfortable, don't do it. And then to the other side, good. And then we're going to 
drop that head down one more time. All right, let's make sure the feet are flat. You can sit back and relax now. I'm going to put my arms up here on the arms of the chair. And we're going to do three breaths together. And then I'm going to stop talking. So for about one minute, it's going to be quiet around here. But it's going to be very relaxing. And that's how we'll end the show. So let's take a breath together. Up, two, three, four if you can, five. Hold for two. Exhale, two, three, four, five, and six. So we're doing the first breath that I showed you today. So let's breathe up again through the nose. My head just comes up naturally all the way up holding for a couple of seconds, and then exhaling through your mouth. Good. You should be feeling that nice relaxed effect. It does work, but you have to do it. Some people do it to sleep, to get to sleep. So we'll do one more together all the way up. Holding, and then exhaling. And try to get rid of all the dead air at the bottom of your lungs. It will refresh you also. All right, legs out straight if, if you've started to bring them in. Just move your feet back and forth. And for the next few seconds, we're going to do nothing. You're going to hear silence. And that's how we'll end the show today. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Namaste. I think that's it. Bye for now. See you next time.